right. My name is Christy Swink Benson, and I am the Vice President of Communications and Chief Spokesperson for WMATA. I want to provide you with a service update, give you a little bit of information about the schedule for the week, uh, and then we'll take any questions and answers. So today we have 40 trains in service. Of the 44 are being used for crowding and unscheduled maintenance. Uh, service levels for customers are as follows. 12 minutes on the red line, 20 minutes on the green and yellow lines, and 30 minutes on the blue, orange, and silver lines. Uh, last week, I think you recall that we removed 32 rail cars from the Shady Grove yard. Of the 32, we have 12 rail cars that are in passenger service, and we are working on the 20 remaining cars to put them in passenger service as well. As always, we appreciate our customers and their patience with us as we work through uh, service and making sure that we can get them safe and reliable service throughout the region. Uh, as you all heard yesterday, the seven Ks uh, continue to be in test mode and that is going as expected. Uh, we'll continue to provide updates as information becomes available. And I just wanna let you know, tomorrow we'll be observing Veterans Day. We wanna thank our veterans for their service. Uh, we'll provide an email briefing on Friday and then we'll resume our video uh, briefing on Monday. So with that, I'll stop and I'll take any questions that you may have. Hey, Adam, I see your hand raised. Hey, Christy, how are you? Uh, hopefully I'm good, how are you? Good, nice to meet you. Uh, this way, hopefully we get to meet in person sometime. And welcome, yes, so. Thank welcome, you. To, welcome to the Metrodome. You're, you're, uh, I'm sure you're learning. Uh, <laughs> listen, I got a chance today to take a ride on the 2000 series, you know, which are obviously the oldest ones that Metro has. They go back to 1983. Uh, the carpet's still in there, and um, you know, more and more of them are being called out. Can you talk a little bit about? kind of what you guys are doing to get them passenger ready I mean obviously they're super old but like I don't know if you have any details on like if the carpet's being replaced if it's being cleaned how these cars are being cleaned and maintained anything that you could add on that would be appreciated well we inspect all of our real cars uh, this is not a new process so this extends to uh, any of the legacy fleet we continue to clean obviously you know the times that we're in so cleaning is a part of our routine maintenance and ongoing maintenance to make sure that we're keeping our customers safe. Uh, and we just continue to do that. There's nothing special uh, about what we're doing with the legacy fleet. Again, safe, reliable service is what we're focused on and making sure that we can get as many cars up for passenger service uh, and running throughout the system so that we can provide that, that reliable service for our customers. And if I can just add one more um, before sure. someone else is on, um, I know there's been talk about potential fares, and I know it, it's a board policy, but uh, anything that you can tell riders about, you know, they continue to face long delays. It looks like we're going into December and they're still paying full fare, um, obviously for not full service. Well, we continue to improve service week over week. We know that customers are experiencing some delays, but we continue to try to improve their wait times, like I said, weekly. Uh, the fares are related to the board and whatever their pleasure is, is what we will uh, do, but we, we can't move forward without direction from the board. So this is something that they continue to look at. I think someone asked about fares earlier this week uh, and we will continue to work with them as they relay any decision to us that we need to implement. Uh, Tom, I think your hand was next, and then Richard, I'll come to you. Uh, yeah, good, good afternoon, Christy. Um, hey. I, I wanted to ask about the tests with the 7,000s. Um, obviously, the idea is to see what happens with the wheels as you're testing these with weight on them, but are, are they checking the wheels at the end of every day? Will they check it at the end of a two-week period? I mean, how, how, I guess, what are they doing every day besides just running these trains up and down the tracks? So I can get more into the details and provide that for you later. I wanna make sure that I'm giving you the right information and information that is available uh, publicly. So I can get back with you, but I can tell you that we do have uh, test trains and service. Again, the pictures that we provided earlier in the week show that these are not passenger trains. They are weighted to simulate 
what it would be like if passengers were on the train. And that is a part of the test. Um, in terms of the details, I'll make sure that we follow up with you on that. Okay, yeah, no, no problem if you don't have it now, but if you're able to email it or whatever later, I would, I'm definitely interested to see exactly what they're doing each day. Okay, definitely I will follow up. Thank you. Richard and then Jordan. There we are. Hi, Christy. I'm Dick Iuliano from WTOP. Last Hi, week, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you. Last week when we were briefed, we were told that you had uh, 40 trains in service with the, you know, the four on standby for crowding and that the goal was to get to 50. So can you comment at all about the, uh, the past week's uh, work? I'm, I'm sure you're, you've been working toward that goal, but you weren't able to add anything uh, in the past week. Well, we have continued again to improve our service. And a part of that is adding additional trains into passenger service. And so we continue to do that. Uh, we continue to inspect um, and place trains back into service as they are needed. And of course, we're working towards that, uh, Dick, but we're, we, we continue uh, to focus on the safety and reliability of, of getting service up to speed for our customers. Jordan? May I follow on that for just a second? Sure, you are may. All the trains that you return to service, are they all coming from that storage area at Shady Grove? And could Not you, all of them. No. Could you no. talk a little bit about the challenges of, um, you know, getting these out of storage, you know, uh, uh, basically uh, rechecking them and so forth, reinspecting them? Could you talk about that work to get them back on the tracks? Sure. I think we expressed last week that there was uh, a lot of coordination that went into uh, taking the, the trains out of the Shady Grove yards. Uh, there was construction being held there uh, that had to be delayed simply because we were trying to get the trains out of storage. We've done that uh, and we've started to um, focus back on construction in that area. Again, Based on what I reported earlier, uh, 12 of the 32 trains are back in passenger service, and we're working on putting uh, the additional 20 trains into passenger service. So it really has been those trains go through inspection like any other trains that we have in our fleet. Uh, and we just want to make sure that anything that we do is focused on safety and reliability. And so that has kind of been what we are focusing on and what we continue to focus on moving forward. Thank you, Dick. Jordan? Hey, Christy. Um, hey. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. Um, you know, back in uh, 2018, Metro launched uh, what was called the Rush Hour Promise, which basically refunded customers if there was, um, you know, a more than I think it was a 10 minute delay or 15 minute delay at one point. Um, you know, on top of the, the usual delays um, with the 7,000 series trains being out, um, yesterday there was an issue on the red line with, I think, somebody on the tracks. Um, this morning there was a signal issue on the, uh, which affected green and yellow line trains. Uh, I know it's up to the board for, for, you know, a lot of people have been calling for flat fare or some sort of something to, to, you know, make up for passengers times, but is there been any talk of, you know, having some sort of rush hour from, I mean, not that, that exact program, but some sort of incentive program to basically, you know, um, give, give riders a little bit of a break during a real tough time. Jordan, I think it's something that the board uh, continues to look at. Obviously, fares have come up over the last couple of weeks. And as we've stated, we would have to work with the board on implementing any fare changes. Uh, I think that everything is on the table right now as we continue to look at how to improve service for customers. Our focus has been on the fleet uh, and getting the fleet up to a level that allows us to improve. Uh, customer wait times. As you know, we have a lot of fluctuations in the fleet depending on uh, the day-to-day -day activities that we're experiencing. Um, it may be crowding. It may be uh, that trains have to be taken out of service for unscheduled maintenance. There may be a deer strike. I think you all have heard us talk about a number of things, but know that we are focused on safety and reliability uh, and ensuring that we can get people safely to their destination. 
So we continue to do that and we'll continue to work with the board. Um, like I said, in any directives that are given related to fares and promises and make goods in the future. Will? Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? And Bye. Jordan, I'll come back to you. I see that you lit up again. If you have Oh, I just want to say thanks. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes, Will. Go ahead. With all the technical work that uh, the, the agency continues to do with checking the wheels, checking the trains, the, all the metro stations, obviously the, the, the one main question comes back, when will service be revamped? And could there be an announcement possibly Monday? Oh, Will, a <laughs> million dollar question. Uh, and yeah. we continue <laughs> to say, I, I know, I, I mean, we, we, I know that many people want a timeline and we've continued to say that, that we just don't have a timeline in place. And that is because we're focused on safe, reliable service. We don't want people uh, that are working, our staff who are putting a lot of time and effort into getting trains back into service to focus on a deadline that we've set. We want them to focus on doing the job right. And that's what we continue to emphasize. So if I had a timeline, I would definitely share that, but I don't. Uh, we have definitely announced what we know right now. We've committed to look at where we are right before Thanksgiving and to provide some type of update based on that. But in terms of a definitive timeline, we don't have it. What we do know is that we want customers to be able to plan accordingly, and we are looking at how we can share the information that we have right ahead of December. Thank you very much. Of course. Adam, I see your hand up again. Yeah, um, the, with the test trains that are out there right now, how are those rail cars selected? Did Metro put them on the tracks or did the uh, Safety Commission come in and say, we want these these trains you know, at random? They did, did they just pick? Can you talk a little bit about that? I cannot, Adam, but I can get back with you. That may be uh, a question that I'm not able to answer just because it gets into some investigative uh, information. But if I can answer it, I'll get back with you and follow up. Promise. Tom. Uh, hey again, Chrissy, just one follow-up question. I, I believe I read this in some other media, but I wanted to confirm if it was true. I, I believe I read that if basically without the 7,000s, about the maximum number of trains, not, not just the goal, but the maximum would be about 50 trains in service without the 7,000s. Is that correct? Or could you conceivably wind up with more trains based on older series? We have said we're working up to 50 trains. Um, in terms of what that makeup is, I think we're going to use all the trains that's available to us in the fleet, which is why we are doing the work to move trains out of storage facilities and get them back into service. Um, and so I can get back with you. I don't have a specific answer on what the current makeup is and what that consists of. But we know that the 7,000 series makes up the majority of the fleet. So without them, we're working, again, to put everything that we have back into service. Okay. Yeah, I guess my basic question for, for when you can get back to me is just what, what is, assuming you got every non-7,000 non yes. series, what, what's the maximum number of trains you could have out there on a given day? Okay. I will follow up with you on that. Thank you. Of course. Any other questions? that I can answer.